As the military continues its crackdown on peaceful pro-democracy protesters, they're also now reneging on their own promises. A spokesman for the junta says although at the time of the coup they pledged to hold elections in a year, they now won't take place for two years. At the UN in New York, a meeting was held to give Security Council ambassadors a picture of the deteriorating situation. The Myanmar people feel that they are left alone to face the brutal regime, armed to its teeth, stopped from arms so by the same international actors who preventing action. The military has ignored our condemnations, posing a test for the Security Council. With the Council, will the Council quiver over language and yet another statement, or will we act to save the lives of the Burmese people? Myanmar's UN ambassador, who opposes the generals, called for a no-fly zone, an arms embargo, and targeted sanctions. Please, please, please take action. This meeting was organized by the UK. All Security Council members were invited, but it wasn't a formal Security Council meeting. Both China and Russia, which object to an official open meeting, only sent low-level diplomats. Not surprisingly, both countries seem opposed to any sanctions on the generals. We share the same concern. The main thrust of recent diplomacy has been in the region. Here, earlier this week, the Indonesian foreign minister meeting her UK counterpart. I'm told a meeting of the leaders of the 10 countries in the regional ASEAN group is likely in Indonesia in the next two weeks. But how do you persuade the generals to talk and to give ground? The UN Special Envoy Christine Schrana Bergener has had her permission to visit Myanmar denied. I'm told there are some countries that are contemplating the idea of appeasing the generals and giving them a future role in the governance of the country, something that would appall human rights activists and those protesting on the streets. James Bays, Al Jazeera, at the United Nations.